Now that we've defined and formulated our question, it's time to gather the data. So let's have a think about the kind of data that we're looking to gather. First off, we need data on our feature, namely the movie budgets in US dollars. The second thing that we need is data on our target, namely the movie revenue in US dollars. So where would we go about finding this kind of data? Well, lucky for us, there exists a website called The Numbers, and their slogan is where data and the movie business meet. This sounds perfect for our project. So let's check it out. So this is what the website looks like. If we go to movies, budgets, and finances, then we get the performance records of various films. And they've even got some tables here on some common searches or common questions that people might be interested in. For example, they've got the biggest budget films right here. And if we scroll down, they've got the movies with the lowest budgets to earn $1 million at the US box office. And I think a notable film here is El Mariachi, which apparently only had a production budget of $7,000, but made about 2 million in the US box office. If we click on this link here, where it says the complete list, then we get the entire table of all the films in the database right here. And this table is actually enormous. It's very, very long. There's quite a few different entries here. And what I've done is I've selected all of these, and I've copy pasted them into a spreadsheet. Now to save you this kind of tedious work, I've made a CSV file available under the lesson resources. All you have to do is download it and open it in Excel or in Google Sheets. And once you open this file, what you should see is the movies sorted by their rank. So at place number one, we've got Avatar, then a Star Wars film, then Pirates of the Caribbean. All of these films are sorted by their production budget, so column D. And if we scroll down, then we can see that there's a lot of entries in this file. As a matter of fact, there's about 5,000 entries in this CSV file. So this completes our data gathering step, and we can move on to the next part of the workflow, namely cleaning the data. So let's take a closer look at what we've actually got. If I scroll down here, then I can see there's a lot of numbers. But occasionally, we might spot something a little bit odd. For example, here in columns E and F, we have two big fat zeros. Scrolling up, I can see these are the columns for worldwide gross and domestic gross. And yet, this movie entitled Singularity, with a production value of $175 million, has zero revenue. And the reason for this might be found in this column, our second column here. What we have here is the projected release date. So end of 2020 is when this movie is due to be released according to this data set. And what they've done is they've put a placeholder of zero into these two columns instead of removing this movie entirely. So they've included it in the data set with $175 million production budget but because it hasn't made any revenue to date, they've added some zeros here. Now, this might actually be a little bit of a problem for us because we're looking to make a prediction for our movie revenue. And if our data set is going to be include films that have not been released yet and have big fat zeros for their revenue, it might make our estimates a little bit unreliable, right? So one thing that might actually be worth doing is checking how many films out of the 5,300 actually have a revenue of zero. And we can do this by sorting by worldwide gross. If I select my data here and then open the menu and then go to data, sort range, then I can actually sort by column number E. And since we don't wanna include that first row in the sort, I'm just gonna tick this box here and then click sort. And what we see here is that there's quite a few films that have a zero entry for worldwide gross and domestic gross. Now, why might that be? Well, for some of them, the release date is in the future. But looking at this column, we see that not every film that has a zero here is due to be released in the future. So for example, this one here, Blackwater Transit was supposedly released at the end of 2008. And this film, also has a big fat zero in worldwide gross. 
Why might that be? Now, one possible answer is looking at the description of the website. So if we go here, then we see this line. The data, to the best of our knowledge, is accurate, but there are gaps and disputed figures. So some of these zeros might be gaps. It might just be that the data is incomplete for some films. But I've actually looked up this Blackwater Transit film, and on Wikipedia, I can see that in post-production, there were actually quite a few lawsuits and there was quite a lot of back and forth between the production company and the filmmakers and the producers and so on. So this film actually never got released. And this release date here of end of 2008 was probably a planned release date, but the movie actually never came out. Now, this might be something that happened to quite a few of these films. And there might have a zero for various other reasons too. But this poses a big problem for our analysis. If we're looking to predict movie revenue based on the budget, then having these zero entries here is gonna be a problem. So what I would suggest, given that some of these films were probably not released, other ones, the data might not be available, is that we should actually exclude the films that have zero here for worldwide gross and domestic gross. We should select all of these entries and delete them from our data set. So if I come down here to row 358 and scroll all the way up, then I can select all of these rows, I can right click and I can delete the rows. We're gonna exclude these rows from our analysis. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna to have to do some calculations and these involve the production budget and the worldwide gross. These other columns, we're actually not gonna use. We're not gonna use the domestic gross. We're not gonna use the movie title or the rank or the release date. So what I would suggest is that as part of the data cleaning process, we're gonna delete these entire columns. So we're gonna delete these columns and we're gonna delete this column right here. That way we can trim our spreadsheet to what actually matters for our analysis. The next thing that we need to do is we need to have a think about these special characters that might be in the data set. And by special characters, I mean anything other than a number. So we're gonna be doing some calculations with all of this data. And those calculations might be troubled by the fact that there's a dollar sign here or a comma. This type of formatting could cause problems. So it's better to remove it and have a pure number in these cells rather than all this extra stuff. And the way that we can format all these numbers and get rid of these symbols is by selecting the columns, going to Format, Number, and then scrolling down where it says More Formats and going to Custom Number Format. And here we can pick the second one down, which is this decimal number, and click Apply. Now we've got no more dollar signs in our columns. So we're almost done cleaning our data. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename my column headings. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna remove spaces and these custom symbols here, the parentheses and the dollar signs from the headings to make our lives a little bit easier on. I find that as soon as I have special symbols or white spaces in my headings, I make a lot more typos when I refer to particular columns. So for this one, I'm just gonna call this production underscore budget underscore USD. And this one here, I'm gonna call worldwide underscore gross underscore USD. With these two names for our headings, I've got very expressive headings, and yet there's no white space and there's no special characters. This will make our life a little bit easier down the line. So in summary, for the data cleaning, what we've done is we've looked for missing data, we've looked for incomplete data, we've looked for inaccurate data, and we've done some tidying up by checking the formatting of our data in detail. And the reason we've done all of this is so that we don't have problems when we provide this data to our machine learning algorithm down the line. Now we can move on to the next step, which is exploring and visualizing our data. Mind you, if we spot any more problems during this next step, we might have to do a little bit more cleaning as well. So you'll find that very often in practice, you're gonna be doing the cleaning and the exploration side by side. I'll see you in the next lesson. Take care.